farm is known as a destination farm or a farm that generates revenue through egg retainment. We're using the farm as a platform in order to have events and draw out that revenue. So this farm is very diversified and has multiple revenue streams and events is one of them. But we also have, you know, corn maze and hay rides in the fall. We expand that by selling pumpkins and corn shocks and all gourds and all of that stuff. And that is a big revenue generator for this farm. The farm on St. Matthias is a, you know, production demonstration farm that folks can come to. They can see stuff from, you know, the whole flow from field to, to raw produce to value-added production. Everything in here is either locally sourced or is an antique related to farming or gardening. We do smoothie sunflower oil, uh, candles from Kinsey Candles in Pequot, pot holders, beautiful quilt pieces, Amish dolls, mittens and stockings made from reused and reclaimed wool, aprons and rugs and handcrafted washcloths. For me, part of being able to tell the story of where it came from is part of the value that we're providing to the consumers that are coming into the store. It's local or it's reclaimed, reused, repurposed. When Bob and I bought the farm about nine years ago, it had been a vacant farm for many, many years. It was a dairy and corn and soybean rotation farm. When we bought it, the only two buildings on the farm were this tin shed back here and the barn. And the barn was either we put huge amounts of money into the infrastructure and save it or we let it collapse and we decided to save it. Okay. It's a very iconic 1950s dairy barn. So we have mixed breed hens and then we have banty hens. I never lock them up, not even at night. I think because we have the llamas and alpacas back here that anything that would come out of the woods has to go past the llamas and alpacas and we've never had a problem. And you can hear the coyotes here at night on the north side of the fence. And they have 24-hour classic music, I swear to God. <laughs> 